Hello folks, this is Sully here once again, and we're going to be doing something a little bit special with this video today. This is actually the 200th full video that I've done for League of Legends. So what I had in mind to do was to go back and look at the very first game that I ever did for League of Legends. It is in fact still available here on YouTube, and I'll put a link to it in the description under this video if you want to go check it out. But I'm going to take a look at it right here right now, and do some commentary over it, and just add some thoughts. So here we go. All right, here we go here. So for first things first, this is the old loading screen for League of Legends. This game was recorded back in August of 2010. So it's actually been almost two years now since this game was recorded. So you actually see some of the old character portraits. It's nice to see some of them here, the old Twisted Fate portrait, the old Evelyn portrait, the old Tarek portrait, that sort of thing. So anyway, I'll just talk a little bit. First of all, here, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the game. And then I'm going to also talk about just my experience with League of Legends overall, and then also my experience with doing these videos and doing this series over the last almost two years now. I never really thought that I'd be doing this when I first started. I actually only started playing League of Legends because some of my friends were interested in the game. In particular, my friend Speaker was the one who kind of got me into this particular game. He had said that it was a really interesting game. It was different. It was something that we hadn't really tried before. We were kind of looking for another online multiplayer game. Uh, in large part because we had been, well, I had in particular had been very dissatisfied with Civilization V when it came out. Civ IV was a really fun multiplayer game. I know that that seems a little bit silly, but we actually did spend a lot of time playing Civ IV online. And Civ V didn't really work out for a lot of reasons. I'm not going to go into detail on that because this is a League of Legends video and not a Civilization video. But if you're curious about that, you can read about it on my website. There's a lot of information on that. But long story short... Civ 5 didn't really work out, so I turned more towards League of Legends, and there were a number of people that I was trying to get interested in this game, other, basically other friends, because this game's a lot more fun to play with friends than it is to play by yourself. So I started, uh, some people had some questions about the game, so I started doing some videos about League of Legends, and it just kind of went from there. The channel got very popular over time. Initially, it was really just to, like I said, inform people about League of Legends, people who didn't really know that much about the game in particular, but over time, more and more people started following the channel, and eventually it kind of turned into something pretty big, <laughs> which is something I didn't really expect. I'm not that great of a speaker, although I think I've gotten a lot better from doing these videos over time. If you ever want to go back and look at some of the early ones, they're not quite as polished as I think some of the newer ones is, but that's going to happen with any kind of creative project. I'm really more of a writer than a broadcaster, but uh, like I said, I think I've gotten better at it. And here we are now, I'm recording, doing the commentary for the uh, IPL qualifiers, which is really exciting, and the last couple videos have been about that. Anyway, so a little bit about this game. I'm actually duo queuing here with Earthstrike, who is uh, another person I knew from Civ 4 multiplayer days. He, wow, there's the old interface, by the way, on the tab screen. He is another person I played some with Civ 4 multiplayer, also got into this game. And uh, you're going to see some, some really low-level, kind of noobish gameplay, <laughs> because this is from a long time ago. This is when I was not level 30. I believe I was like level 22 at the time. So I was still relatively new to this game. I'd only played a little over 100 games. And one of the other things you have to keep in mind is League of Legends itself was not nearly as developed back then in 2010. The game was still really you know, it was getting shaking out there with the metagame was not nearly as well established back then, just because this was when the, the first big tournaments were really starting up that the first big League of Legends tournament that I can remember. Well, the first big tournament that they did was the the one on Twisted Tree Line, they did the, the uh, Twisted Tree Line Invitational and that was in early 2010. But that was on Twisted Tree Line. So that was a little bit of an unorthodox things. But the first really big competition I can remember, uh, at least on Summoner's Rift, was when they did a comp and they did the World Cyber Games in 2010. And that was in uh, like October or November, roughly, in 2010. And uh, even back then, if it, it's really quite funny if you go back and watch the videos for that game. It, 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 well, the games from that tournament, it's really funny. You'll see all these like bizarre lanes. You'll see things like, you'll, like you'll see Tristana in mid and you'll see bottom lanes that are like uh, Malphite and Morgana together in bottom lanes. And again, these were the best players in the world at that point in time. It wasn't, you know, people who didn't know what they're doing. It's just the metagame itself hadn't really developed yet. Because again, of course, all that stuff has to get figured out. You know, nobody comes into the game when it's first created knowing what the optimal strategies are. So that's something that really has evolved over time. Anyway, so that's one of the reasons why you see these sort of, you see these just bizarre lanes, of course, have, have ex players with less experience and uh, the metagame still really not developed yet into what we're all familiar with 
uh, in this day and age, which is of course the uh, AP mid in mid, the AD and a support in bottom lane, and then either a second AP or a bruiser in top and some kind of bruiserish champion in the jungle, which is of course the standard pattern. Anyway, so double, we have a uh, double, no junglers on either side. This is again really standard. When I first started playing, jungling was still kind of new. Not a lot of people were doing that at the time. It was only there were only a couple of champs that anyone would jungle with. It was basically Warwick and maybe one or two other champs. That was pretty much it at the time. So no junglers on either side. We're actually running Zillion Amumu, which is <laughs> just a hilariously bad lane uh, for a lot of reasons. Zillion is still considered a support at this point in time. He's actually more of an AP carry than a support. Than a support. But anyway, yeah, Amumu, terrible laning champion. And we're actually up against Tarek and Evelyn, which is really funny as well. Uh, if you've noticed that Nobody's really last hitting particularly well. Uh, Earthstrike and I are fighting for last hits. Again, it just, it's still standard. You still see this in sort of lower level play nowadays. But, I mean, at the time, it's just everybody ran duo lanes. If you were in mid, you were solo. If you're in the if you're in the side lanes, you know, it's a duo lane. And you just try to last hit as best you can. Of course, over time, people realize, it's like, you know, fighting your laning partner for last hits doesn't really work that well. Oh, I think this is where I actually make a really dumb play, and I go in, and I try to uh, tried to go in and get that kill on the double bomb, and uh, I just ended up getting stunned by Evelyn underneath the tower and just died instantly, which is a, you know, really bad play, obviously. Uh, it did pop a summoner heal there as well. Now, one thing I will mention, this is back when Evelyn did stun. Uh, yeah, she actually did stun back in the day until she got nerfed, and uh, I am not anxious to see that ever come back. Evelyn can just go and rot in a fire as long as, as far as I'm concerned, because I played when she was really strong, and let me tell you, the ability to stay stealth for you know, 30 or 40 seconds and then come out of stealth and stun you. That, that was just not fun. You know, that was really silly. Uh, that was not, that did not make for fun gameplay. So I'm glad that she got nerfed down into trash status. Um, anyway, right here, I'm uh, going to use the double bomb and that is going to go off and it is going to get that kill on Tark. So able to pull one kill back. Anyway, note the summoners here as well. For whatever reason, when I first started this game, I had a lot of trouble using flash effectively. I had to practice a lot. In part, that's because I mentioned this when I first started playing. I don't know. I I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but I, League of Legends is the first game I ever played that was at all similar to this. I never played Defense of the Ancients, never played Dota, never played any game that was like this before. So I had a lot of trouble getting used to the keyboard just when I first started playing. I, I still fumble with fingers, still fat finger things fairly frequently, even after having played this game quite a bit. Uh, another issue, I do not, some, some people, I've mentioned this before on some of the broadcasts, I do not type in the standard typing style. I, I taught myself how to type. We didn't really have like a, a typing class when I was in school. Actually, we did have one, but it was like one week and they didn't really teach us anything. So as a self-taught typer, I have sort of this unorthodox way of typing on the keyboard. And these games that set things up for QWER might work really well for people who are used to typing, but it doesn't really work that well for me. I kind of, my hands just kind of move, fly all over the keyboard and tend not to stay in one place. So anyway, I had a lot of trouble getting used to just the keyboard setup for this game, even though I know it's very standard for these uh, sort of online PvP games that are like this, that, you know, your Dota games and your Dota clones. So I had a lot of trouble getting used to that, and uh, because Flash is something that relies so much on reflexes, it's something that I had a lot of trouble with early on, so I, I actually tended to use Ghost Teleport a lot. Teleport being used as sort of a crutch, which which is what you see in a lot of new players. I actually got to the point where Speaker, who had played this game longer than me, started several months before. He was finally like, look, you need to, you need to stop taking teleport every game. It, you know, you're just using it as a crutch to cover, uh, to cover when you go back in lane. You, know, you just need to learn when to go back in lane as opposed to just relying on teleport. And uh, that's a good point. Teleport is an excellent summoner skill, but uh, most new players do just use it that way. It's like, oh, um, oh, look, the minions are pushing a tower. Let's just teleport there because I'm out of position and I wasn't there to cover the lane. So if you're just using teleport to try to cover positioning, then it's a summoner skill that eventually you're going to need to drop. So anyway, you would run Flash Ignite on Zillion uh, in this day and age, but of course, still trying to figure things out. Anyway, I did buy the Vision Ward right there. And by the way, this is back when Vision Wards all look this... Or, or, um, um, yeah, this is when all the words looked the same. Notice how that word looks really bizarre in this day and age, but uh, all the words actually looked like that. They were all had the little blue handle on them. And then eventually someone at Riot was like, hey, you know what? It might be a good idea if we made the normal words and the vision words look different. Let's make the normal ones green and the vision and the vision words pink. So they actually did put that in a, in a patch, but uh, that actually is the word that sees stealth. And I went ahead and bought that so that uh, we'd be able to see Evelyn. Evelyn... 
not a particularly great laning champ at any she was never really a good laning champ at any point in time, but uh, she had been running around stealth, and I, I just figured I would go ahead and buy that. Anyway, another thing I will mention is that you might have noticed at the start of the video I bought a Doran Dring and a Health Pot, and uh, you know, that actually was something you could do. Doran Drings cost, what was it? They co I think they cost four, what was it? Four, like 450? I think it was, no, it, was, it wasn't that, because you could get a health pot, too. I think they were 425 but anyway, you could buy a Doran's, uh, you could buy a Doran's item and a health pot at the start of the game, and that was pretty standard, and eventually Riot got tired of that, and they nerfed the Doran's, uh, nerfed the Doran's items quite a bit, quite a few times. Anyway, Evelyn is stealthed up there, but that's why we can see her, um, although I'm considering giving away by bombing her. Anyway, uh, the thing, they actually ended up going too far in that direction. Oh, here I'm going to get exhausted. So I'm going to use my speed up to dash out of there. And there I'm actually going to use ghost, which is totally unnecessary and a very poor use of summoner skills. Oh, by the way, notice I actually clicked on the summoner skill with the mouse instead of hitting D. And remember what I said about having trouble with the key bindings. Anyway, the point I was going back to, yeah, the Dorans were a lot stronger before. Everybody usually started with one of the three Dorans and then one health pot because, you know, it makes sense. You usually can, if you buy just one Doran's item, you can usually hold on to it for most of the game. So it made a lot of sense. Riot ended up nerfing that, and uh, they, they unfortunately they've kind of worked themselves into a corner now because literally everyone just starts boots three pots. It's what you start on, like, 95% of champions. So there's probably less diversity right now in starting items than ever before. So, um... Maybe they'll take a look at that. I don't really know what more they can do, though. They've already nerfed the health pots a couple times. They can't really make them any weaker and still have them be worthwhile. So, yeah, in this game, there's a, we're just kind of leaning back and forth here. I, if I pull up the tab screen, hopefully I'll do that at some point in time so you guys can see. The farming is very low. Minion scores are really low on all sides here. And I'm fighting Earth Strike for last hits, and Amumu is just... You know, a terrible farming champ in lane. Zillion, not too much better. Um, not when he's in a duo lane like this anyway. I'm just sort of randomly bombing creeps, and we're trying to harass, but we don't really know what we're doing at this point in time, and that's why we, this lane is just kind of stalled out. Nothing's really going on. The biggest thing that was going on in this particular match, and I, I, I do remember this match really well because it was the first one I ever did a video on, was this Mordekaiser player who started out in middle lane. He was playing against our Twisted Fate. He just destroyed our Twisted Fate, and he was getting kill after kill after kill. Uh, he started roaming around the map, and Earthstrike used his ult there, but I had no idea he was going to do it. So are we actually going to get this kill? I don't think that we get that one. Yeah, I, I, we could have gotten that kill, but I had no idea he was going to ult. Anyway, yeah, this Mordekaiser player started in mid. He got he killed Twisted Fate like three or four times, and then he went down to bottom lane, and he got a double kill there. And if he's down in bottom right now, again, typical of low-level play. This is what you'll see for people who are just starting out all the time. Notice how there's no words on the map anywhere except for the vision word I picked up. So we've got no idea when this guy is switching lanes, when he's going from one place to the next, where he's going to show up, and they're just standing they're auto attacking uh, in that bottom lane, taking that tower. And I believe that they get that tower, if I remember this. Um, but in any case, I think I'm going to go back right now or something like that. Yeah, see, they actually do take that bottom tower. So what this game really turned into was, it was like, what could we do to try to shut down this Mordekaiser who was just like ridiculously really far out in front? He, would, he got like six or seven kills or something insane like that. Anyway, there's a big fight going on in bottom lane right now, and Mord Mordekaiser just gets another kill. Uh, this is not from a replay. When I recorded this, there actually was no replay client, not even the unofficial LOL replay client, which is let's face it, pretty ghetto in its own right. It's kind of amazing that it works at all. Yeah, there goes another kill from Mordekaiser. But there was nothing at all. The only way to record footage was just to have a video recording program, something like Fraps, um, and just literally record while you were playing. Anyway, so here is me. I'm going to use the teleport once again as a crutch here. I'm going to pick up the Merc Treads and a Vision Ward, and wow, what a bizarre start. But I'm going to use the teleport, and this is actually a justified use of it because we would have lost this tower here otherwise. But again, it's just being used as a crutch uh, as a way to cover for bad positioning. Either Earthstrike or I easily could have rotated down from top lane. There was no need to use that teleport. Our Twisted Fade is nowhere to be seen. So anyway, that's, I mean, in the context of that moment, it's a good teleport because it saves the tower. But in sort of the larger strategic perspective, it's not a good teleport because someone should just be covering that lane to begin with. And here's Mordekaiser. He is level 11. He has got all kinds of stuff. But the problem is, for Mordekaiser, is he's sort of stuck in the Iron Log dictates of this game as well. He might be really strong, but since he's in this game, he also doesn't know what he's doing because he's probably like level 22 or something. 
something as well. And that means even if he's got a lead, he doesn't know how to keep it. So anyway, this actually does turn into a pretty interesting game as we go along here. Um, my own uh, silly mistakes notwithstanding. See, we actually managed to catch Mordekaiser over at our red right there. See, it's being pinged. Again, I have the sound off because if I, if I had the initial sound in, you'd hear me talking twice on the video. So Mordekaiser goes in and he is trying to fight a 1v4 right here. He's going to get one kill there. He's going to get the kill onto Twisted Fate. And instead of trying to run away because there's three more people here, he continues to stay there. He keeps fighting. And I'm going to use my double bomb right there, the double time bombs. And he's still going to continue fighting this. Look at this. He's going to keep fighting this. He's getting hit by Malzahar. He is taking a lot of damage and he is going to get another kill right there. But I actually am going to pick off a kill there. And notice how much gold I get. I actually get 880 gold from that kill. Because back again in this day, this is something else that's been tweaked in patches. You could actually get up to 1,000 gold. Yeah, Mordekaiser was 8 and 0 at that particular time. He was 8 and 0. And uh, you, you, they, I think it's capped at 600 gold now. Uh, if you kill someone who is legendary. But you could actually get up to 1,000 gold if you ended a legendary killing spree uh, at when this game came out. So that that actually made a really huge difference because it gave me just a ridiculous amount of gold. I mean, 878 gold for one kill? It's like, are you kidding me? That's a whole blasting wand right there. So now I have all this gold. Of course, I don't really know what to do with it because, you know, starting out... Because, again, level 22, hadn't played a lot of games, but uh, that's quite a bit of gold. Again, you also see the enemy team just pushing, pushing, pushing. What's what's the new new bot? Push, 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 push. But <laughs> you see them doing that, and uh, it looks like I'm going to turn that into a Rod of Ages, which is, I mean, I guess it's still early enough to make it worthwhile. Rod actually took, I think it took 15 minutes to get the full stacking. That was later changed to 10. So uh, a little bit more questionable of a decision here, but, uh, you know, it, uh, not not the worst decision in the world either. Anyway, I also had, when I also first started playing, for some reason, uh, I had read somewhere on one of those for, uh, one of those guides on Mobifier or something like that, that Merc Treads were the best boots, and so I interpreted this to mean always buy Merc Treads on everyone at all points in time, no matter what. <laughs> so I always would buy Merc Treads on every champ, even here on Zillion. Uh, in this game, in this context, I mean, it's, it's a decent pick because Mordekaiser is the one who's causing us all these problems, but um, it's a little bit silly of a choice as well. Anyway, here, going to bait Rise into this fight. The only problem is Mordekaiser's here as well. That is trouble. He's going to use his ult right there. Molzar is taking a ton of damage. I am going to use my ult on him, though, so he's going to revive. And that is going to allow time for the rest of our team to come back here. Unfortunately, Mauls doesn't flash away, and he just dies instantly. So that's another kill there from Mordekaiser. And we're actually really far behind in this game. It's 14 to 6 in kills. I don't know how easy it is to see that, because that red never really comes out quite right. But uh, right here, Mordekaiser is going to be coming in. He's going to look to dive against Earthstrike here. He's going to make another big mistake. See, Earthquake, Earthstrike's going to use his ult, and Mord is just getting shot by the tower. And again, he just stands there. He makes no attempt to escape. So I'm actually going to get another kill there on my bomb, and then I get a double kill, because Tarek is standing there tanking tower damage as well and that's going to give me a double kill and that just feeds me much much more gold so i'm actually now four and one on the game so like i said mordekaiser got way ahead but of course he doesn't really know what to do once he gets ahead so he stands there and he tanks like eight tower shots trying to kill earth strike who is of course a mumu and is inherently tanky by virtue of being a mumu uh doesn't get the kill Tarek dies as well now i'm four one and by dying like that twice, Mordekaiser really does help us get back in the game. Look at his farm. He's got 117. No one else in the game is much over about 60. And again, that's one reason why Mordekaiser has always been sort of a strong champ. Uh, at this point in time, he was very strong. He got a number of nerfs after this. He actually got nerfed, and then he got buffed, and then he got nerfed again <laughs> over the last two years. But uh, at this point in time, he was very strong, and particularly in these sort of lower skill games, you often see him being really strong just because... Uh, his skills kind of farm for him. And right there, I'm going to push forward with no ward coverage and three of them come and surround me. And then I hand a very needless death back to the enemy team right there. And they actually get quite a bit of gold for killing me because I was on a, a four kill spree as well. Anyway, that's just a mistake. That's just uh, not having enough ward coverage. When we don't have any vision, um, you don't want to push that far forward. And for some reason, our entire team was in the side lanes for some reason, not exactly sure. Anyway, though, the point I'm getting to, Mordekaiser, strong champ. Uh, his skills kind of farm for him, so that's always made him uh, pretty useful against people who sort of don't really know what they're doing. He's actually one of my least favorite champions in League of Legends. I've never liked him, in part because I had some experiences like this when I first started playing. I also had some, I had a couple games 
early on where I, I used to play Annie a lot, and I played Annie against Mordekaiser a couple times, and I, I used to just get wrecked by that matchup. Anyway, we do have more action here. Look, look at what Mordekaiser's doing. Once again, he's got this huge lead, and what does he do? He, he runs behind the tower, and again, tanks like seven tower shots, and then dies, and then Tarek dies as well. And now TF's going to ult, and is he actually going to do something? Is he actually going to catch Rise here? And yes, he actually does. Meanwhile, Teemo gets caught over here as well, and uh, that means he's not going to be able to escape this either, as long as we're able to, uh, you know, catch up to him and and uh, finish finish off with the task of bursting him down. So anyway, I'm actually going to use the slow there. That's decently played, and Walls is going to finish that off. Is someone actually going to take the blue buff here? One of us should. Now, what we really should do is is Baron off of this. We could have Baron easily, but, you know, it, it's a lower skill game. We're not used to doing that, so... Anyway, but uh, those last couple sequences um, with Mordekaiser, if he had just played safe, if he had just you know kept farming and stayed with the rest of his team, then he could have easily snowballed that game because he was so so far ahead. But instead, he you know he dives the towers, and that's a common mistake of people who are relatively new to the game. So he he handed back three kills to our team, and in that last fight there, he baited his whole team into a into a terrible fight. We actually went four for zero, and uh, those fights really put us back into the game. Those were that like now the game's relatively even. They're still ahead, but. Um, it's it's relatively even right now, and Evelyn's trying to do her best with Summoner Heal to bait that kill, although a Malphite does end up picking that up, and it looks like everybody on our team's going to be okay. I actually do have the ult up, and right there I'm going to save Twisted Fate, and that was a pretty sweet pretty sweet um, Zillion ult. It's kind of funny, really, that the first video I did was with, was with Zillion, because he's a champion that I just never play. Um, he, he's, I think he's one of the hardest uh, APs, actually, to play. He has, he has a pretty high skill cap, not in terms of just double-bombing people, I don't know how they didn't kill him there, even after I revived him. Might have been people not knowing how Zillion works. Anyway, I do think he's one of the harder champs to play as far as AP goes. Not not in terms of his double bomb, but just in terms of using that uh, his W, what's that called, his time shift. Um, it's it's a kind of a complicated skill to use, and you do have to be a little bit careful in the team fights. Yeah, Earthstrike had played this game more, but he's still putting himself in kind of some bad positions. Uh, I keep buying these vision wards because Evelyn's in the game, just for that reason. But I probably should have just bought an Oracle if I wanted the the uh, ability to see stealth that badly. Anyway, while we have a break in this game, a little bit more about what it's been like sort of casting these games. It's really quite interesting because when I first started out, uh, the, the reception was tended to be more hostile. I had some nice comments, but there were also a lot of people who really were kind of jerks. There were a lot of people who said that I had like this terrible voice. I find that kind of funny. If you go back and look at a lot of my earlier videos, people will say, there's a, there's a lot of people saying, you suck, your voice is awful, what are you doing, things like that. Oh, here I'm going to try to bait Teemo into this fight. Let's see if this works out. I can't remember if this worked or not. And yeah, we actually do manage to get uh, get Teemo there. Uh, he's going to use the summoner heal, but that is going to finish him off. Meanwhile, right here, I do not have my ult up. I, I, it would have been, I think, if I had been spamming the, the W there for the cooldown. So I probably could have saved Malzahar right there. But... Um, it wasn't up because I didn't really know how to play Zillion. Anyway, though, Tarek here somehow gets separated from the rest of the team, so that should be a pretty easy kill. Doesn't seem to have Flash, or if he does have it, doesn't know how to use it. My ult is two seconds off cooldown, so I'm not able to save Earth Strike there either. But we still have a pretty good fight going on right here. There is Eve, and we're going to be able to kill her. And uh, now Rise is coming to the fight, so we probably need to get out of here. But I think that that was a, I believe that was a three for three, so a relatively even fight. And we'll see if this this team uh, understands how to how to play this. I do want to get back to the point that I was mentioning before about some of the experiences with casting the games. Like I said, there was some hostility at first. It's kind of interesting. A lot of people now say that they really like my voice on the videos. And again, uh, I'm glad to hear that. It's not something I can change. I'm not doing an, like a, I'm not trying to do a voice. I'm not trying to do an accent. I do have an American accent that I'm sure everyone has picked up on. But this is just the way my voice sounds, and I can't really change that. <laughs> so I'm glad to see that now the reception for that seems to be more positive. I might just be getting more polished at it as well. One of the other things that's interesting as well is over the course of just doing this, people sort of get to know you. People will like certain things. People will not like certain things. One thing that people really seem to like was just doing the, doing the same introduction to each video, to have people to introduce videos by saying, hello, folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for League of Legends. People really seem to like that, so I kept doing it. It wasn't anything I had planned. I, I've tried one or two different things at times, but people never really liked the introductions as much. So... Again, uh, just if you do a series like this, uh, over time you'll figure figure out some things that work, some things that don't work, and it tends to happen kind of organically, which is very nice at times. I also the other thing you do get is you do get both people who are fans and you get people who are the haters as well. Uh, it would be nice to 
have a nice not to nice to get sort of the happy medium between them sometimes now don't get me wrong it's always nice to have fans i enjoy having fans you do sometimes get people taking it a little bit too far <laughs> i do have i have had some cases where some people have uh kind of spammed me with personal messages like a lot <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes three or four times per week at some point in time. And it's kind of a difficult situation to deal with because I know that in most cases, these are people who really genuinely enjoy the channel and enjoy the things I'm doing. And, you know, you don't want to say, you know, hey, go away. You know, that's that's not the point. You, you know, you enjoy the fact that people are following the channel and that they like the work that you're producing. And oftentimes it's people who are, you know, who are teenagers or people who are younger, uh, you know, and they, they kind of look up to you in certain ways at times. So you have to be a little bit careful. It's just at the same time, you, you don't either, you also don't want to get be uh, getting bombarded with messages over and over again either. So it, it's kind of a fine line to try to deal with that. And I actually do understand sometimes how people who, um, you know, are, are better known people, you know, people who are like actual celebrities, not just somebody who runs a YouTube channel. I do have a little bit more sympathy for them sometimes, just because being even a semi public figure with something like this means that there's always both someone telling you that you're great. And there's also people telling you that you're terrible at all points in time. And just trying to, you know, sort of deal with that over time can be can be difficult sometimes. And like I said, trying to let people know that you appreciate their, the fact that they enjoy the channel while at the same time also um, not, not having them pester you to death, to be perfectly honest. It can be kind of a fine line sometimes, but it's an interesting experience to say the least. Anyway, while I was talking about that, there was a team fight in top lane. It was the same thing once again. Their t the other team was ahead, but they overdived. They dived uh, behind our tower. That Mordekaiser player who was really far ahead is actually not that far ahead now because he keeps doing these silly dives. And so with them diving, 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 and uh, with me able to use my ult to save myself, we actually came out ahead. Look how low those farming stats are. Wow. We got, we, we everybody's pretty low skill, uh, skill level. Oh, Malphite, double Sunfire Cape. Woo! Back when you could stack Sunfire Capes. <laughs> Uh, I do kind of miss that. I remember one time when Garen went on sale, they did, the ride did a champion sale for Garen, and they uh, it said 50% uh, off Garen, and like the, the, the second post in the thread underneath that, somebody uh, cleverly typed 50% off Sunfire Capes too. <laughs> and I thought that was great just because uh, back in the day, everybody would stack like three or four Sunfire Capes on Garen. So anyway, they did change that to a unique passive, of course, so uh, you can't stack the Sunfire Capes anymore. Anyway, a little bit more about the channel. One other thing I wanted to talk about. When you start to get a larger channel with more of a following, uh, particularly once I started to get the subscriber count up into the thousands, you start to people start to look at you a little bit differently. Uh, you start to get people um, asking you for favors. And like right here, I'm going to ult Twisted Fate because he was on like two health, but he actually ends up not dying. And he actually runs away for the fight, even though he's been chrono shifted. So that means I can't use the ult to save our strike there. So that was like, oh, his twisted fate really looked like he was going to die. But then he didn't. So it was like, ah, so our team lost that fight pretty badly. We face checked right into all of them. And look, what's Mount, what's uh, what's this Mordekaiser doing again? Oh, the Mordekaiser, he's diving behind a tower. But I think, he, I think he's going to be okay on this one. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is if people start approaching you differently. You start getting a lot of people asking you for favors. People start asking you to promote their stuff. Uh, again, I said that when I first started out a lot, there was a lot more you suck comments. Once I started to get more follow subscribers, it was, hey, can you promote my channel or can you, you know, do a plug for this? Uh, that sort of thing. I started seeing that a lot more. And then uh, you also get advertisers starting to come after you as well. I had the fortune to be able to work with the button mashers for quite a long time. For a number of months, they were able to get the, uh, you know, work in a partnership with them. And that was a very rewarding experience. It was nice to be able to get featured on their channel. Ultimately, though, I think it was good to end that relationship when we did. It wasn't an acrimonious parting. I still have only good things to say about Jerry and the button mashers about that. It really did work for me at the time. Uh, just more of a philosophical difference there. Uh, that's a channel Jerry and the button mashers kind of like to do sort of I guess I'd say sort of more humor-based stuff. Uh, a lot of it's sort of more adolescent humor, to put it kindly. And uh, that's that's kind of not what I do. For people who follow the channel, this is more educational. Uh, I don't use any profanity on the channel either. I don't swear in the videos. That's a conscious choice. I think that it makes them much more professional. I try to approach this in the same way that I would if I were doing this professionally. 
And uh, so anyway, just, just more of a stylistic difference there. Uh, not anything bad to say about them, but when I had the opportunity to work with uh, Curse Gaming, which is, of course, you know, a team that you know, runs a professional League of Legends team, it was something that I had to go for because it just opened up a lot of doors for me. Anyway, right there, we do score a double kill. Uh, nobody on our team falling, and we're all next to Baron, and uh, no, we're not going to go do Baron. <laughs> nah, we're not going to do Baron. <laughs> Again, something I see all the time in these in these games where people just don't have as much experience. That's about as gift wrap of a Baron as you're <laughs> ever going to see there. And our team instead chooses to push mid, which is not a bad decision. Um, but taking Baron there would, would be much stronger. Earth Strike gets off a nice ult right there. We get the uh, a Mumu ult into a Malphite ult. And that's, that's a strong initiation, so that's going to score two more kills. Why those two are even trying to defend that tower, I have no idea. Uh, and then Evelyn's here, but hey, it's Eve. She's not really, not really going to be able to do anything by herself. She needs allies to be able to do anything. And our team now needs to stop pushing. We need to go back and heal up. And I'm actually going to type that, but I'm not sure if anyone's going to listen to me. So yeah, it has been really a fun experience doing all this. Like I said, uh, the experience has definitely changed over time. I've tried to do a lot of different things with videos too. I, of course, had to, really no choice but to record myself when I started because there wasn't even a replay client. There were no replays. I could only just record myself playing. So I was pretty limited early on when I did these videos. If anyone wants to go back and look at my early video list, most of the games are me playing Annie or Karthus just because I didn't even own that many champions and I could only use champs that I actually owned. Because, I, again, I had to use fraps and just record myself playing the games. Uh, when we actually finally got the replay client, which was in early, 2000, uh, early 2011, I'm going to say. I think it was February or March of back then. It was when I was on video about 35 to 40, roughly. I'd have to go back and look at exactly what it is. Uh, here I am using teleport as a crutch once again to cover for lack of positioning. <laughs> so again, something that makes sense in the tactical context of this game, but not, not sort of good from a larger strategic perspective. Anyway, once we got the replay client, it was much better because I could actually have people send me replays and use more champions. So for instance, I had a lot of my friends send replays and I still have that happen. Speaker was able to contribute a lot of videos of champions that he played, uh, people like Shen in particular, some of his junglers because he tends to jungle a lot more often than I did. I also had the fortune to meet a lot of people that I didn't know before. Varus Knox, for example, I'm sure anyone who does the follows the Tuesday game nights, of course, is familiar with Varus by now. Did not know Varus prior to League of Legends. It's this is where I sort of uh, we both met up with one another, and that's been a really fun partnership for the last year or so. Been able to duo queue a lot. Varus is really good at playing the AD champions. I'm really terrible at playing the AD champs. So of course we duo queue a lot. Uh, I with myself meaning support, and that's allowed me to get a lot of good footage of AD champions as well. And of course, lots of other people I've known. I have had uh, been able to do some viewer games from time to time, people sending me their viewer, uh, people who are just viewers of the channel sending me their replays. Uh, I get requests all the time to do that, to do the cast of viewer games. People are always asking, hey, if I send you a replay, can you cast it? And the answer to that is, uh, sure, I mean, I can try to take a look. It's just that there are, there are always way more people asking me to do replays than than, uh, than, than I can deal with. Uh, there's just more replays being sent to me than I can actually handle because, of course, there's only one of me and you know there's thousands of people following the channel now. So anyway, that's something that uh, I always send back the same answer. I, I've said this a, a number of times before, but it's always the same thing. Uh, if you want to do that, Earthstrike makes a really nice play there with the bandage toss as Rise sticks around too long. If you want to do that, the thing to do... Oh, and look, Mordekaiser is staying around too long again. I will finish this point. Believe me, I will finish this point, but I do want to watch this fight. Yeah, so Mordekaiser sticking around too long. The classic uh, beginner's mistake, sticking around too long on a push. Anyway, if you do want to do that... Uh, I will, you, you can, if you want to send me something, I will try to take a look at it. I can't promise anything because I do get sent a lot of things. I do get quite a few replays. It's not unusual for me to get four, four to five or even 10 replays in a week sometimes. What you can do is you, what you do is you upload it somewhere online and then send me the link by YouTube personal message, YouTube PM, so I can download it. Don't try to email me a file. Uh, I would prefer not to do that because the files can be kind of large. So just upload it somewhere online and then send me a link where I can download it. And again, no promises, but I can try to take a look at it. And I have gotten some good games that way. I've also gotten a lot of games that way. Um, th those videos are actually some of the least popular ones I've done. I, it, it's one of the reasons why I don't do them that often. It's like people are always saying, hey, do uh, cast my viewer game, cast my game, cast my game. It's like, okay, then I do cast the game and they're always the least popular ones I do. 
uh, it's kind of interesting. People just don't seem to like them as much. Um, I think part of it is because most people think they're better at League of Legends than they actually are. I, I know that that sounds kind of mean, but it, it really is the truth. Um, a lot of the times people will send me videos that they think are really great gameplay and, and they're kind of not. Uh, I'll often get sent some video that, or some replay that's like 65 minutes long and it's like one of these games where neither team has any idea what to do when they get ahead. So the game just goes on and on and on until someone finally like bumbles their way into a victory. And they'll be like, oh, it's so close. It's so back and forth. It was so exciting. And it's like, well... I mean, it's close, but that doesn't mean it's a, a well-played game just because it's close. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I've tried, I've done some videos like that. I've also done some stuff on some like learning teaching videos on people who are, uh, you know, either lower level or not as experienced. And uh, some people have really liked those, but those also have gotten a ton of downvotes at times as well. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, you have to, you have to sort of um, not always listen to what people say, but, you know, sort of react to uh, how they respond. And from what I've seen, um, the user games tend to be the least popular for whatever reason. People, uh, the most popular ones are when I'm doing the professional teams, which now I have a lot more footage of, fortunately, thanks to IPL. Those tend to be popular, and people like it. Uh, tend to like it when I'm playing, uh, when I'm playing in, on a team with people I know, and we're able to, um, you know, like like show off some either like an unusual combination of champions or just uh, like a, a bottom lane pairing. Those bottom lane pairings have been very popular. People seem to like them. Um, but the viewer games seem to be the least popular for whatever reason. So that that really is the reason why I don't do them as often, in part because a lot of the times the games that people send me aren't all that great. And then secondly, because the, they're just, the, I get more downvotes on them when I do the do them on the YouTube channel than anything else. So that's really what's going on there. Uh, people request them, but... Um, you know, they I, when I actually do them, they're not that popular. Anyway, did if you might have seen the Zanya's ring there? I do kind of miss Zanya's ring. I think it was a smart decision to split that up into Zanya's hourglass and uh, the Rabadon's death cap. That was a good decision on Riot's part. It was kind of silly that the top AP item also had this stasis feature that didn't really have anything to do with it. So splitting that into two items was a really nice decision. And uh, even though I even though I kind of missed the artwork for it, but whatever. They could have just kept that Zanya's ring artwork for the and just not come up with the hourglass had, you know, ring and ring and death cap, but oh well. That ring did look kind of evil. I guess I kind of miss it sometimes. Anyway, in this in this game itself, the game has been really snowballing in our favor because we've been winning the team fights. In part, I have gotten off some pretty good uses of the Zillion Chrono Shift ult, but I really would say the biggest factor in winning the team fights has been the combination of a Mumu ult into Malphite ult. We've done that two or three times, and it's just really wrecked the team. Now, right here, we're going to get to a play. I actually do remember this from playing this game and watching this video. Right now, look, notice how Rise is in bottom lane. Rise and Teemo are in bottom lane, so we're going to initiate on them, and and we're going to fight this 3v5. So there we go. A Mumu ult into Malphite ult. It's a 5v3 here. We're going to easily kill all of these people. Right there, Mordecai's just trying to get the ult on me. Watch, they're all focusing me. And then right as I'm about to die, boop, there we go. Zillion ult. Yeah, that's why everybody hates Zillion. So we're going to cleanly win that team fight. Three for nil. They only have two people left uh, on their team. And again, that was recognizing that they had two people in bottom lane. And that was one of the things I was able to point out in this video when I uh, actually did it for the first time, when I uh, broadcasted it. So that really is the thing that probably is sort of my calling card here. Oh, by the way, why can we see the mushrooms? Um, Malphite actually is an oracle. There was no graphic for the oracle when uh, back in the day. And yeah, that was kind of silly. Uh, no, There's no, gra no graphic for who has the oracle, but uh, Malphite does have one. Anyway, the thing that's really is sort of the calling card that I've had for League of Legends is just uh, doing analysis. That's why they kind of got me to do the uh, IPL cast. Uh, working with right now with Optimus Tom, Tom really does the play-by-play because -play he's better at that. He, he definitely is. He's, he's more uh, personable. He uh, can call it better when there's a lot of action going on. But they use me sort of for the analysis portion of things. That is uh, sitting back, trying to explain sort of why things happen. And that, that's kind of always been my strength when, in terms of doing stuff with gaming. I did the same thing with my civilization reports on my website, which are all still there, by the way, if you want to check them out. Uh, people always like that as well. Uh, I would always write, you know, sort of not just what happened in a civilization game, but why it happened and, um, you know, what I was thinking when, uh, certain, when different things would happen in the game. So people always enjoyed reading that. And I've tried to bring that over to these uh, broadcasts as well. Anyway, this game is uh, getting finished off here. Their team was kind of trickling in one by one. If you watch right here, it looks like Malphite's going to die. And right when he's about to die, oh, there we go with the save. I had some really sweet Zillion alts in this game. So, no, Malphite actually is not going to die. 
and we're actually going to finish this game off, and we're not going to lose anyone else here. So there we go. And uh, it's actually going to be the end of this one. So I am going to show you guys. You are going to get to see the video screen here at the end, but it's not going to be up for too long, and I think I've lost this screenshot. See, see I didn't even have... I had just over 100 games played here, and this is the old end of game screen. But uh, I don't actually have a screenshot of this anymore, so you just have to take it as it is. Anyway, I do want to use the last few seconds here to thank everybody for their support on the channel. It's really been a blast. I've gotten so much helpful feedback and constructive criticism. It's really made the channel so much better and improved over time. So once again, I want to thank everybody for their support. It's been a pleasure working with people and just listening to all of you guys over the past few months. And uh, nope plans to stop so let's keep this going and let's see if we can get uh, another 200 league of legends videos over the next couple years I, I don't know if i'll still be playing the game yet though still then but as long as i am i'll still be here and i'll still be recording anyway once again thanks for watching thanks for listening hope you guys enjoyed this and i'll see you guys again soon take care